Every executive wants an AI strategy, but most end up with a list of tools, not a transformation. The truth is, most companies don't fail at AI because of bad models or a lack of GPUs. They fail because they start with tools instead of outcomes. Studies from BCG and Gartner show that 70 to 80% of enterprise AI pilots never reach production. At the same time, executives expect AI to deliver a 15 to 20% productivity lift over the next three years. That gap between expectation and execution is where most strategies collapse. AI isn't just a technology shift, it's an economic one. The companies that treat it as core business strategy, not experimentation, are the ones compounding value. In this video, I'll show you how to close that gap with a practical AI strategy you can brief your board on tomorrow. I'm Tatiana, a senior AI and machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services. I help organizations identify the right AI use cases build capability and turn pilots into measurable results. Across every sector, I see the same pattern. Different tools, same roadblocks, no ownership, weak data foundations, no clear success metrics. I'm not here to sell a model or a platform. I'm here to give you a playbook your executive team can actually use. At the executive level, a winning AI strategy balances three things use cases, capabilities, and controls. The three pillars of a winning AI strategy. We'll start with pillar one, which is all about use cases and starting with value, not models. If it doesn't move a number the CFO cares about, it's not an AI use case, it's a science experiment. Start with business outcomes, not technology. Every use case should cascade from a core business priority. Customer growth, operational efficiency, or risk reduction. Tie it to a KPI you already track. Revenue, margin, customer churn, or cycle time. If churn is at 12%, build an AI use case that cuts it to eight. The math keeps the project honest. Use a value by feasibility matrix to prioritize. Start with high value, medium feasibility ideas. The quick wins that prove impact without multi-year build outs. Think of your portfolio like this, 70% core optimization, 20% adjacent innovation, and 10% moonshots. That balance keeps your AI program ambitious, but grounded in business results. Pillar two is all about capabilities, building the muscle for scale. Once you know what to build, you need the muscle to make it real. That's your capabilities layer. Capabilities are your data foundations, platforms, integrations, and people. Technology alone doesn't scale, processes and talent do. Decide early what to build, what to buy and where to partner. Culture becomes infrastructure. If teams aren't fluid in data and experimentation, the platform won't matter. Invest in change management and upskilling because most delays aren't technical, they're cultural. Technology scales capability, culture scales confidence. And pillar three, which is all about controls, speed with trust. Controls earn you the license to move fast. They include security, privacy, compliance, and model risk management. Set up evaluation harnesses for accuracy, safety, hallucination, and bias, and guardrails for sensitive data and prompt injection. Controls should cover the full model lifecycle. Who retrains? who approves and who monitors model drift. Many leading firms now use AI risk registers or model cards to track accountability and compliance. The goal is adaptive governance, strong enough to ensure trust, but flexible enough to enable innovation. Where to start? The question I get most often from executives is simple. Where do we start? Here's the five point filter I use with clients across every industry. One, direct line to money. Does it clearly grow revenue, reduce cost or lower risk? 
If it doesn't link to one of those three, it's not your starting point. Two, data availability. Do we have the data and can we access it responsibly and securely? Without clean, complete data, even the best model won't move the needle. Three, operational ownership. Who truly owns it? You need a business sponsor, not just the innovation team. The person accountable for the outcome must also own adoption. Four, clear success metrics. What's the baseline and what's the target? Ideally, something measurable inside 90 days, fast enough to prove value, meaningful enough to matter. And five, integration path. Where will this live and deliver value? In your CRM, ERP system, or workflow system? If it doesn't fit how people already work, it's a proof of concept, not a product. Who owns AI in your organization? Here's a question that decides whether your AI strategy scales or stalls. Who owns it? There are three models. The first is centralized. A chief AI officer sets standards and platforms. Best early on when you need speed and control. Two, there is the embedded structure. Small AI pods that sit inside business functions. This is best for domain depth and real business ownership. Or three, hybrid, where you might have central governance and shared infrastructure with business-led delivery and accountability. And this is where most mature organizations land. Most companies evolve along this path. Centralized, federated, hybrid. You start with control, then distribute delivery as scale demands it. Watch where the budget sits. In high-performing companies, AI funding shifts from IT to business P&Ls within 18 to 24 months because ownership follows value. The chief AI officer's role isn't to own delivery, it's to enable it. Their mandate is to make every function a little more autonomous with AI. When ownership aligns with value creation, AI stops being a project and starts becoming culture. Get this right, and AI becomes part of your organizational DNA. Every week, I see the same mistakes and every one of them is avoidable. AI theater, which is flashy demos, no production, fix this by trying to tie use cases to KPIs from day one. Then there's model first thinking, chasing specs but not solving problems. Fix this by starting with data and metrics. Then you have data drift and hallucinations where you have no evaluation harness. Fix this with continuous testing and retraining. Security gaps, prompt injection or PII leaks. Fix this with guardrails and least privileged access. Change fatigue. Team CAI is extra work. It's important to align adoption with recognition. No return on investment story. Success is not quantified. Fix this by tracking returns with the AI flywheel. Avoid these and you're not just adopting AI, you're operationalizing it. Your AI strategy should be clear, measurable and embedded in how the business runs. Because if it isn't driving your goals or your numbers, it's not a strategy. The companies winning AI aren't chasing every new model. They're building or operating systems for intelligence with measurable use cases, reusable platforms, and continuous learning loops. The real differentiator won't be who uses AI, it will be who learns with it. Because intelligence no longer just lives in the model, it lives in your management, metrics, and momentum. Over the next year, we'll stop asking, what's our AI strategy? And start asking, how intelligent is our business. And if this helped, subscribe for the next episode on how to identify the right AI use cases, where we'll apply this framework to real world examples. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.